Sifu Bogi here, and welcome to The Way of Conscious Mindfulness. So firstly, before we begin, who the heck am I and what's this show all about? Well, my name is Sifu Bogi. Sifu means guide, muse, somebody who points you along the way, who guides you along your path. Bogi is my martial art, it is my spiritual and healing name, and it means the balancer between the chaos and the calmness. So for the last 36, well 37, sorry, 37 years, I have been practicing arts like Qigong, Tai Chi, Chinese massage, Twina, Titta, acupressure, many other different techniques, and in the form of the barefoot doctor, which is one ancient style in Taoism, and the dragon dog shaman, which is another. I've been, like my Sifus before me, I have been helping healers, coaches, and light workers, especially, but anybody who needs it, to supercharge themselves and ensure that they never burn out, which, as I said, is accordance to the Tao, which means the way, the path, the balance. So what is the way of conscious mindfulness? Well, it is a regular Facebook Live podcast show balancing spirituality with science with a blend of mind, body and spirit. Now, and of course, with a Taoist twist. Again, what is the Tao? The Tao means the way, the path, the balance. Now, surprise, surprise, this isn't a normal show. Anything with me in it ain't normal. Each week... We either have a guest or a subject. Now we have a very awesome guest tonight. The doctor is in the house. Pardon the pun. Um, And we and our aim, our goal is to have an open discussion, helping us all find new techniques, new ways to balance our very own personal way path or Dow. So without further ado and a couple of clicks, I will bring on the gentleman himself. Good evening, Joe, or Dr. Dr. Joe. Good evening. How are you doing, sir? Sifu Boggy, I'm fine, thank you, and thank you very much indeed for inviting me. Uh, um, oh, it's a pleasure and an honour, dear sir. It's definitely a pleasure and an honour. Um, uh, so, I'll, I'll go, go for it. Shall I explain who I am? Yeah, but I was going to. I was going to say, you know, my oh. first question for a change, ch- stepping it up a little bit. Who, firstly, who are you? Who are you? What What do you do? Well, my name is Dr. Joe Delaney, and before we start, it's clear to well, it's I need to make clear that I'm not a doctor of medicine. I'm a doctor in medicine, and what that means is that I've actually done a PhD in medicine, and it took me seven years to do this PhD. And really, my PhD was about how what goes on between your ears affects the rest of your body, uh, especially at the level of the heart. So I, when people ask me, you know, is there a title that you've got? I'm a consultant in psycho neuro endocrino immunohematology. So it's quite simple, really. <laughs> and what that means is psycho or psyche means mind and how our mind works, how the mind affects the brain how the brain sends instructions via the nervous system to our endocrine glands, how the endocrine glands then secrete various biochemical substances and hormones, how those substances then flood the bloodstream and then impact upon the stem cell surfaces. Are you with me so far? The stem cell surfaces and depending on the amount of, depending on the amount of uh, biochemical substances, that will determine how our stem cells express themselves. So the way I see it is the way that we think, the way that we process information, sends information all the way through to our body. So it's almost like the invisible realms impact upon the physical realms. And then there's a feedback loop, in my mind at least, like the infinity symbol that gets down to Earth it comes down to earth, we take actions, and then it feed, feeds back all the way back into the heavens. And my feeling is that, you know, we're in constant communication with the heavens, and the heavens are in constant communication with us as well. How does oh, that sound? Cool. That, that's beautiful. That, that, that's beautiful. It's, it's a, 
uh it it's what well, it makes sense to me and uh it's uh yeah it's a good it's a good way to start the show so like i say normally i normally this next question is is the first question so this is your show um and so as being your show and it is the show of of dr joe uh so what is well, joe what is your way what is your doubt what is your your way your path your balance well, if I start off and give some history, my, my first career was in biomedical sciences. I, I left school early and I got a job in the local pathology department, uh, washing test tubes. And I just loved every single minute of it. I was fascinated by how the body works, both male and female, right? Uh, how, um, how disease manifested. It just seemed to be some sort of natural inquisitiveness in me to look deeper and deeper and deeper. And what actually happened is because I was so sort of enthusiastic about it, I passed the exams very, very quickly. And as a consequence, they promoted me very, very quickly and took me away from what I really loved into a more administrative role. And that sort of almost cut me off, if you like, from the sunlight of the spirit. And it led me into some sort of dead end, dead boring paperwork job, you know. And what, what I did to try and overcome this, because it was well paid, you know, um, I was seen as quite high in the establishment, but something had left me. And in order to replenish this sort of um, feeling of relaxation, enthusiasm, I started to drink a lot. Right. And over the years, as the stress, as the anxiety and as as um, as the years went on, the drink became more and more uh, involved. And then as I tried to grip my teeth and get on with it so I could provide the wife and the children with the money they needed and all that sort of business, then I became exhausted then, you know. And so I found substances like smoking cigarettes used to stimulate me. I used to take handfuls of Pro Plus tablets. That, I don't know whether you know those, but they're like caffeine tablets. And I just used to swallow these down, right. And so I was in always in this sort of imbalance where I was trying to sort of medicate myself in order to carry on with the job that I was in. Hmm. Anyway, after years and years and years of this, I became addicted to alcohol. I needed more and more and more and more to give me this sort of feeling of relaxation and release. But then when I woke up, I needed more and more stimulants. So I was always in a place where there was no balance. I was either up or down, you know, and I was using chemical substances of, of any sort, right, to try and get back that feeling of some sort of normality. And... Um, in the end, Sifu, what, what actually happened was um, I lost the job. I lost the wife and kids. I lost my liberty. I lost my home. I lost my driving license. And in the end, I became homeless. And um, for quite some time, I was just sort of wandering around like a lost soul. And I do believe that that's what I was, a lost soul. Mm. Um, and then uh, I made the first attempt to try and take my own life, you know, and obviously not successful, but quite a serious attempt. And what happened then was I was um, I was taken into a sort of almost like a bail hostel, uh, like a rehabilitation center, and I sort of got back on my feet again. But as I was sort of exposed again to the, the outside world, all the old habits came back. And so I started to drink again. And I ended up in a, in a sort of horrible little lonely old flat. And uh, then I made a really, really serious attempt to do myself in. You know, I took loads and loads of tablets, paracetamol, sleeping tablets, and a bottle of sherry, and I knelt down, and I, you know, I'll tell you the story. I'll, I knelt down, and I wasn't in touch with anything like the universe or God or spirit, or but I knelt down, and I almost said, you know, I'm sorry, I've come to this. I don't know what's the matter with me. I don't seem to be able to stop it. I'm, um, I'm hurting myself. I'm hurting all the people around me. Can you just let me go, please? You know. And then what happened then was miraculous, really. Um, I felt this feeling. It, it was almost like something grabbed me almost and, and cloaked me in this feeling of peacefulness. It was the most beautiful and pleasant feeling that I've ever had in my life or as far as I can remember. And I do believe that that's what people call the peace that passeth all understanding. And in that, in that moment, and I don't know how long it lasted for, but in that moment, I almost like understood everything about the universe, everything about human life and the cosmos. And I even saw a mathematical formula that explained it to me. I, I can't I can't remember it now. But at the time, I just knew everything, you know. And then 
I could feel this piece and I thought, thank God for that, it's over. And then I started to have an ep epileptic fit and I was sort of kick-started back into this life, right? And then I ended up back in the casualty department with all sorts of charcoal drips in me. And from there, I ended up back in the psychiatric department. But then something had happened to me, something had changed. And um, I was eight weeks in the psychiatric department going through intensive rehabilitation and stuff like that. And um, I learned that really I'd been living everybody else's life except except my own life, you know. And um, so my Tao, as you like, is I'm trying to live an authentic life based upon how I think, what I feel, and taking personal, personal responsibility for the whole business, you know. And when I was let out of the psychiatric department, I had a completely and utterly different mindset. Lots and lots of things happened to me. I felt this energy from inside me. It was almost like moving me to different places, you know. And I developed a sort of relationship almost with my left ear listening into my heart. And I used to sort of ask my heart, what shall we do today? You know, and that was over 27 years ago. And every single day I've developed a sort of a routine where in the morning, as, as I wake up, I tap on my heart and I just say to my heart, what are we up to today? What's on the cards today? Um, I didn't know I was going to talk about this, but there, this is my story. And, um, you know, and over the time, what happened to me was I had my scientific background, but I was led to the local further education college. And I just got this sort of big uh, message, if you like, from inside to say, go down there now and sign up for a sports therapy course. Well, I didn't I had no idea what a sports therapy course was, you know, but I ended up going along. And in that, I learned how to do massage. I learned all about health and fitness and well-being. I was then introduced to complementary and alternative medicines. I was introduced to things like um, aromatherapy, reflexology, Indian head massage. And so I, I say spirit now because it's, e it's easier than saying source of unconditional love, which is the soul to me, you know. So spirit or God or, or this internal drive, it guides me every day. I believe, to improve myself, um, to find more and more joy within myself and to try and um, live an authentic life. I don't go out to help anybody else. This is something I've realized. You know, If people get helped secondarily to the fact that I'm getting better, I mm -hmm. think that's how it works, really. There, wa there was a time when I was like an ambulance chaser because I, I got such an awakening. You know, I believed like I was the second coming, really, and I could put my hands on people and I would instantaneously heal them, you know. And as I was walking through fields, flowers would grow. I was in this sort of savior complex for a while. Um, but then I was gently lowered back to earth. And in the process, I've learned things like um, I've done many, many different forms of martial arts. Um, I've moved away from the hard stuff like Wing Chun and full combat stuff, you know. And I've come into a very, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. And I was introduced quite some time ago to the works of Mantak Chia, you know, Master Mantak Chia. Mm -hmm. And so I have some understanding of about the, you know, bone marrow nei kung and using rattan sticks to improve tendon strength. And so mm -hmm. I've done lots of that. And where I'm up to now is um, basically going deeper and deeper into the cultivation of this inner energy, this inner mm -hmm. engineering and this inner technology. and. Um, I love it, you know, um, I feel that I get guided to work on certain parts of my body. Uh, where I am at the moment is my left hip and my left leg. So, am I all right carrying on? Have I bored you yet? Or, no, 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 okay. no. All right, yeah. Hey, and, you, and, you're speaking my language, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, you will never bore me. Um, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll do some people in a minute see what the, the, the audience are saying. But no, no, you carry on for now. I'm enjoying this. Carry so I've, I've teamed up um, with many people across the world. Um, yeah. with, I've met Todd Medina. I don't know whether you know Todd. Mm -hmm. And I've met mm -hmm. this very strange person called Shanine Banrian. You know, and, <laughs> and there's so many, there are so many coincidences happening in my life. But it's not just the traditional Chinese stuff, you know. There's a lot of stuff coming in now about, um, if you like, love, unconditional love as the root source of everything, you know. And where, I, where I'm up to now is 
in the field of epigenetics, yes, quantum mechanics, and where I've been taken back now is up to the Higgs field and the God particle, you know, the Higgs boson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Sifu, I didn't have a clue about all this stuff, but as I go deeper and deeper and deeper into meditation, it's almost like my mind expands and information drops in. Yes. So I don't really have time to read books now and, and to do that. It's almost like what happens to me is I get the information in and then afterwards a book will come along to confirm it. So I'm not going out to search for any, any information anymore. It's almost like the deeper you go, the more you let go of your ego self or the bonds of the ego, the more that the information comes in because it's been there all the time. And what I've learned about drinking and addictive behaviors is it was a chemical means to open up to these realms of consciousness. But when the chemical levels went down, then the, the gates closed again, you see. And, mm -hmm. and I, my, my view is I don't take any medication now unless I have to. I don't take drugs. I, I'm trying to lead as clean a life as possible. I'm not opposed to any of that stuff. People have got to be, they make their own choices. And they learn from their own mistakes and stuff like I've had to. Hmm. And so that's where I'm up to. I still eat meat because I feel that when I'm ready to let go of that, it will be directed to me by my soul and not by my ego or by some external pressure. Because most of my life was driven by what will they think of me? And maybe I should follow them rather than follow this inner, inner wisdom, you know. So in a nutshell, I'm learning more and more every day. I'm 64 years of age. I've just completed my 15th marathon. I swim a lot. You know, I am um, I do a lot of internal energy work. Um, the exercises that you do, I do, you know, and to me, it's all about completely letting go um, of the ego self mm. to allow a bigger self to come in and fill, fill you up. So yeah. there we are. That was a big, a large nutshell, but... Um, That's good enough. That's a good nut. Um, uh, and, and there's, oh, blimey, there's so many things there. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, the, the, the whole point, the whole point, for, so, so the Tao, you know, the Tao, the Tao is just a word. Tao just means the way. And every way is important. You know, is the one biggest thing I say is the Tao means the way, the path of balance, but it's your personal way, path balance. So, you know, it, it is that, yeah, you take, you can take bits of mine, you can take bits of, of Joe's, you can take bits of whoever, but you, you, you ultimately need to find your path, your way. And, the biggest for me, uh, if you have not read already, the hero's journey. You know, there are, there's you know, Joseph Campbell is one of the main people wrote, but there's other you know, there's other people who've written similar things as well. But the hero's journey is, if you've ever watched a Hollywood movie, you're watching the script. The the the, the basis of that script will be the hero's journey, and the hero's journey is actually something that goes all the way through time. It's it's it, the information that was found for the hero's journey was actually found through the ancient scriptures and the ancient knowledge and our lives go through you go through this this hero's journey and what i mean is that you you hit rock bottom at some point you have to go through these dark times the dark time of the soul or the dark night of the soul and you journey through and you know if you're still here firstly if you're still alive don't ever think, oh, oh, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not important. I, oh, you know, I haven't got a purpose. If you're still alive, you have a mission. You have a purpose. Otherwise, you wouldn't still be here. Period. You know, don't give me any other cods. Well, look, if you're still here, it's because you've got a mission. Firstly, and everything you've been through is a lesson. If you, re if you keep going through stuff, repeating it, like, you know, the same sort of people over and over again or same sort of situations, it's because you still haven't learned that lesson. Yeah, but yeah. the whole point of everything we go through is it, it, it is something to learn and grow from. Um, you know, so, so there's that. And then, and then like, you know, the whole, you know, the, the whole thing of addictive personalities, a lot of, there's a lot of people, in fact, one of my friends, me and my friend today was saying, most people wouldn't get to possibly see it, but, um, you know, 
I have an addictive personality, not in, in essence for alcohol or drugs, but you know, I've always been always loved ice skating. I've always loved crazy, you know, crazy stunts. I've always loved, and I'm if I'm addicted to anything now, I'm addicted to chi, to to um to chi, you know, chi jing and shen, which are the energies of the universal, or at least three of them. Um, and it's the whole point for me was uh, you know what I feel that void of that that addictiveness is with the qigong um energizing exercise neigong stretching exercise and shengong meditation exercise and that's become my purpose that's become you know become one of the things that you know i float you know flow with um and you know you know you're the, the way i'd simply say it is dr joe you're Taoist. you know is you found your way you found your path and the whole point is which is another one of these things we do do not get trapped in the idea that things are linear do not get trapped in oh yeah i've mastered everything and i've got nothing more to learn you're still alive you still got, still got something to learn you still got something to grow and the more you add the more techniques you add the more you grow the more you flow one of the biggest sort of, for me the one of the biggest um things that is, de is detrimental was the in I'm old enough to remember the old saying of, oh, jack of all trades and master of none. Well, jack of all trades, you're master of one, which is the all. You're learning your own individual personal balance. And for me, that was all, oh, well, from the barefoot, the barefoot doctors of China, they learned many, five different qualities of skills they learned. And from those five, if you had these five main skills, you could, you could, in essence, you could find a combination that will help anybody. And the biggest thing for the, the barefoot doctors is that they actually help people to help themselves. Yeah. So it, it's not actually, and you know, that thing of, yeah, when you first get into the healing realm, you know, the first thing you learn, you think, oh my gosh, everybody's sick. And then I must heal everybody. And it's like, yeah, that's like that. That's like trying to uh, trying to empty the ocean with a thimble. You know, good yeah. luck. Yeah. You know, um, but then you realize then you eventually learn is that is that, yeah, you you only really truly help people by helping yourself. By over, when you're overflowing, you can help others, and you can only help people when they're ready to help, when they come to you being ready for for that, you know. And and you know you'll have people because there's so many stories of in Reiki and 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 in the Chinese doctors of doctors going out, people going out and helping people, and after a couple of months, weeks, years, they come back. And they help them again a couple of months, years, a week. They come back because until they're ready to do it for themselves, yeah. they'll always just use, uh, you know, they'll use other people's uh, assistance and, and you get stuck in this loop. So it is this thing of it's all about personal balance, finding the and, and don't, you know, don't think the west went in about specialized, you know, oh, where because I think was it the, in the medical profession, I think it was around about. Oh, I think it was the 1500s where they where um, they said that um, no one ma man is great, but no no one man can know everything, and that's where they started creating specialists for you know the the head, the arms, uh, and everything else. And where the where the Chinese doctors that you know they special they have spe specialized in certain techniques, but they also know the general as well. They can help the general, but you know they say, oh right, okay, this thing, oh yeah, can help you particularly with this or or that. But it's all about homeostasis. It's all about, about balance. No, I, I agree. I mean, where I'm up to now is um, we call this subtle energy medicine. Um, you know, and you know, you mentioned Jing Chi Shen. Um, the way I see that is that Jing, to me at least, or the way I've been taught, is in initially it's a raw form where it's a cultural sort of thing that we bring through our ancestral history in our DNA. So that comes with us, whether we like that or not, you know, and then we move. So Jing, to me, in its raw form is instinct. It's raw instinct that's being conditioned over time. And this is where, to me at least, epigenetics comes in, mm -hmm. that the conditioned behavior of our past almost – puts layers or shields you know like the onion layer that people talk about and that actually starts to close down this raw spiritual energy 
It's almost like we set that up in the world of spirits as the game that we've got. We set the prison up. And as we go along, we've got to find our own individual innate abilities to free ourselves from the prison that we set ourselves up for. So it's almost like the first half of your life, you imprison yourself. And the second half of your life, you use your skills and abilities to get out of the mess, you know. So I see that Jin comes in initially. And, you know, pe people have different views of this. And then we move into the Chi, mm. which to me is... Oh, we lost him, uh, but he, he's there, I think, ready to come back in three, two, one. Go away. <laughs> but you're back. You're now back, which is all yeah. good. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, 10 years before he died, he introduced uh, two more stages. So he brought a seven-stage triangle into it, and he basically believed that all humans developed through, first of all, the first stage was personal security. So that was to do with the physical body protecting itself associated with the adrenal glands you know so to me um from a chakra point of view that's the first two and the first three chakras you know and then we get to a point at a rock bottom at 3.5 where we've come to the end of our tether we can't think our way out of stuff anymore and life just seems like the bits right and what people do is if they go to modern medicine modern medicine will not understand this progression or evolutionary route so it tries to give the medications i'm not knocking it because i do believe there's some fantastic stuff goes on in medicine my belief is that we need to work together to help people and not fight against one another you know that's that's my view but at 3.5 lots of people go round and round like in a groundhog circle you know and they can get medication which will dull their sensation. I think that's exactly the opposite of what they need. They just need people who have been through, like yourself, right, who've been through the path a bit more just to pull them up to the next stage and let them carry on from there then. So I see that's my sort of job, a bit like yours, is because I've been through this and I can sense this at a very deep level almost where a person is in their stages of development, I can almost like know what they need to do next and to me, it's all about action. As my good friend Todd Medina would say, the human is the hero. Because I think that we've got to ground this by overcoming fear. Every time we step through childhood fears that are deep in our psyche, the energy of the defensiveness that we've been keeping in place and then floods back into our system, gives us more vitality, enhances our self-esteem and self-confidence, then we can go forward then to meet the next challenge on the hero's journey, you know. So it's Jason and the Argonauts. Mm. It's the golden ram on the golden fleece. You know, there's male and female equivalents to this. But in the end, I believe that the soul is androgynous. Yep, absolutely. The soul's androgynous. <laughs> you know, we have masculine and feminine within all of us, you know. And an example of this is in menopause, female menopause, levels of estrogen go down. So relatively, testosterone levels go up. So many, many women then start to grow facial hair. Their voice starts to drop and go deeper, you right, and they become much more pleasant. That last one was a joke. <laughs> now, just, just for the audience, that was a little joke. I've got a hammer here. I've got a hammer here if you want to hear. I've actually got a lightsaber if you prefer. You know, you know, take, take your, take your, hey, hey. Always, always, a bit like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, always know where your lightsaber is. As oh, well. absolutely. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, I mean, and, and part of my understanding now is in order to go forward, you've got to basically cultivate an inner smile, you know. And then that's what I've learned is that the joy of living is so important and that just radiating a smile anyway, just going through the physical act of smiling and breathing out because the the the, the outbreath, as you well know, is associated with the feminine, the vagal nerve, the yin, the dark, and the nurturing side of our nature. And that's what's been pushed down really. I think over time and a long, long time, this patriarchal system has kept the feminine in place basically. And I think with the shift of 2012 and 21st of December, 
I think the sacred feminine is making a comeback, but in a nurturing and gentle way, you know. And my view is that more and more people are tuning into programs like this. They're starting to feel the movements within their own body as their body starts to wake. And I think in my own experience, when you have a spiritual awakening, that's only the beginning. And I think that we need to cultivate that's very raw awakening. And I think over time, if we can help people to get in touch with a more refined and more subtle energy, then they'll understand at depth what human nature is all about. Because to me, to be human is to be divine. You know, it's that combination of both, you know. Yeah. So uh, I don't know whether that sort of coincides with your feelings and beliefs. And yeah, 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 pretty much. Um, yeah, uh, well, one of the things I say a lot now is about the whole, you know, with the Tai Chi. I mean, some call this the yin yang, but in actual fact, it's Tai Chi because the yin yang is opposing opposites. It's half a black circle, half a white. Tai Chi is actually about combining them together. What we're in now from 2012, it's all, all about the complementary opposites. So the, the whole thing, you know, and, you know, that's uh, well, the divine feminine, which is the yin, the divine masculine, which is the yang, when you blend them together, when you blend your two sides together, because it is in within all of us, you know, it, it's that courage, that strength, um, that courageousness it is, is in essence a yang, but that nurture that loving you know you, you know that that kindness that they are the, the also the yin and when you blend them both together whether you're male or female you know you get that divine and that's what you should be you should be get the qualities of both and not just one so you put that across beautifully um let's uh i did say we're gonna fire up some um comments so we got carla saying hi sifu um Ah, the mighty Shanine, she says, myself and my husband and my mother-in-law are here. Is that the, the see, see, my dyslexia is kicking in. Is that the the Molans? The Moolans. The, the Moolans. Mo see, see, I wanted to say the Moolans because Moolan, Moolan was the, if you've ever watched uh, uh, the Disney, Moolan was a, was a female Japanese, um, female Chinese warrior, sorry. Uh, moon was a right so the <laughs> but it, it had a D on the end so 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 even bit even better Shanine your 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 name is a female Chinese warrior you know have you not watched Disney um but anyway there'll be Paul, no there'll be um, no living with her now <laughs> I, I I think that's too late anyway I think I think you know I think she's 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 already in I, I've since I've started teaching her Kuan Yin I think she's gone very much into um Qigong and she's she's very she's very much hooked and in love with Qigong I, I can tell you that uh, I think already and we've only just started on that journey um but it's all good in the hood so uh Joanne Joanne is saying uh listening in Pinsby so oh. that's that's up north, isn't it? If I remember yeah, it's right. about it's about two miles away from where I live. Oh, oh, oh there you go. So uh, and Ria is saying, um, uh, I've just done twenty minutes of Qigong. Uh, I've been re reading Bruce Lipton all day. I'm a good student. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, you are indeed, Bruce. Bruce Lipton. So free. Uh, uh, oh, that's the thing you was, you said. I want to quickly uh, reiterate that is like where you saying like now books or information, they, they actually are more like signposts or, you know, they, they, they confirm what you're, you're looking at. And a lot of what I learned from my seafoods, that's exactly what quantum physics, what the epigenetics, you know, so Bruce Lipton, Greg Braden, Nissan Harriman, the, yeah. those in particular for me are, you know, when I started looking at their work, it's like, oh, oh, right. Oh, yep. You know, oh, that goes back to that. That goes back to that. And it's 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 those, you know, that's, you know, one of the things I say is everyone and everything is your seafood. You know, everything is a guide and muse. Even your hardships, they are teachers. They are muses. It's just how how you see it. You know, if you take it as a, you take it as a whack on the head, uh, uh, you know, it, it will it will teach you eventually. But you take that, oh, you know, that information from that from that hard time, I've learned this. I've learned how, you know, and redirect things. You know, that everything is a guide. Everything, you know, even your ego, when, when in spiritual terms they talk about monkey mind yeah. and you must destroy monkey mind. 
I always say you can't destroy monkey mind because it's like the uh, is one half of this. You can't. It's like destroying half half your body. You know what? Are you a fool. You know it, it is part of you. You know it, it is. It is the yin and the yang is part of you. And monkey, the whole thing of monkey mind, the, like that ego, the forebrain, is that in meditation when you draw yourself back from the forebrain. You, you know, you don't get lost in, in those 90, 60 to 90,000 thoughts that medically they say we have every single day. When you start listening the monkey mind as a, as a guide, you know, if it's telling you, oh, you know, oh, don't go and do Qigong, go and go and sit and watch TV or go and veg out. And it's like, well, actually, maybe I should do the opposite. And and the and with intuition, intuition is more that's the one you do have to listen to. And that's the one. Well, as listen, you have to be very quiet to listen. So that's the point of meditation. But for me, meditation doesn't mean you have to sit there on a mountain going on, you know, that a meditation but you but you know what you know watching a stream going and doing a bit of qigong or you know going for a cycle going for a walk and just observing drawing things in washing the dishes sewing fishing they're all med if you do them as you focus on one thing and allow everything else just to to dissolve so forget everything else that is what a meditation truly is and and it's this it's one of these things in our society we try to you know flower it up and make it look all you know mystical scary and and you don't have to really you know meditation is as simple as you know doing your favorite hobby or or even doing something you don't enjoy particularly but doing it in a mindful way so like i said washing in shaolin temple they would meditate by sweeping the floor. They would meditate by by doing the crops. That to them is meditation. And when you realize that, everything, you know, for me, everything changed. You know, the whole perception of what a meditation, you know, you can be doing a meditation simply by your journey onto work and observing people, you know, because because and you know, and look at the, you know, and it's just by learning, it's it's knowing that. Nothing has to be as complicated as we make it. And, you know, yes, you have lots of things and, and you know, you can learn, but you go through the flow of that and, you know, and, and you know, find your own personal way or doubt. I think what, what you mentioned, yeah, what you mentioned, uh, my, my research showed that um, the hemispheres of the brain, the way they operate or cooperate with one another or not, impacts directly on the way the heart works. So most of us are in a state of what's called accentuated antagonism where we can't make a decision and we jump from one hemisphere to the next. That creates an incoherent state at the level of the heart, which causes all sorts of problems. And what um, people like um, Bruce Lipton talk about and Greg Braden and Nassim Harimain and um, Fridjof Capra and all these people, they're all talking, you know, in the Tao physics, they're talking about ways where the breath can intervene. And this is what Buddha said, you know, just become aware of your breathing. And what I found in my research was that if you can use a positive emotion and you can put your hands on your heart and just feel your hands touching your heart and just breathe in, two, three, four, five, stop, out, two, three, four, five, stop. If you can practice that, Sifu, three 10-minute sessions a day in a quiet place away from the world and all its lunacy, what's been shown in mindfulness and the neuroscience of mindfulness is we reconstruct neural pathways into better habits. We become more emotionally calm. We can think clearer and we can make better choices. It really is that simple. And these techniques practiced over time have saved my life. They help me to make better choices. Am I completely and utterly sane? Absolutely not, right? I've got a long, long way to go, but I've never felt more well. I've never felt more fulfilled. I've never felt more grounded. And, you know, joy, most of my life is filled with a deep inner joy that I never thought I'd be able to experience, you know. So I'm just saying to the people who may be listening, what you're looking for is under your nose. You know, it's not out there. It's just six inches below your nose and it's all to do with breathing and stuff like that and one more thing sorry for going on but one of my teachers said to me in order to stop the monkey mind 
he said, listen behind, listen behind, you know. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I focus at a point six inches away from the center of the back of my head, from the occipital lobe, and I try and intently listen to that. And what happens is almost instantaneously, the mind calms down, you know. So there's a little tip for some people. Mm. Uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Shanine. Um, yeah. <laughs> so see, see what she's what she thinks is normally she can't stop me talking. And it's like no, I do let people talk. You know, um, you know, it all it, it all depends on the flow, and and it all it all depends. You know, it all depends on the way it's going. But it's all good in the hood, and yeah, indeed. I mean, that whole thing about yeah, you know, the monkey mind is that you. You know, we're, we're, most people are so much in that forebrain, so much, you know, focusing on exactly what's in front of them. It's uh, Bruce Lee once said, uh, um, it's like a finger pointing towards the moon. Do not look at the finger because you'll miss all that heavenly glory. And then he smacks you on the back of the head. But, you know, yeah. I'm not there to do that. But um, so it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's being aware of, and, you know, it's, it's just learning to do things in a different way and that's what's so cool you know I'm, you know this is such a cool um cool conversation indeed so um let's have a quick look let's have a quick look see if there's any more um gang in off of me how rude would never gang up on you at all janine i don't know what you're talking about so uh uh, there is uh, smiley faces. Uh, happy, oh yeah, happy solstice! It is the solstice. I was down at, I was actually down at Brighton this morning, um, just by magic, and uh, and then got back uh, for this afternoon. So I saw a bit of the sunlight or the dawn at the uh, at Brighton, which is always good. Um, I'm not noticing all this next time. Uh, we're both under under my charge all oh, right all oh, right so apparently uh apparently joe next next time uh shanine's going to come on and she's going to be boss okay she's, she's going to be the boss of and then somebody somebody actually said about 100 years ago about women were were healers in actual fact the barefoot doctors which um uh, in in the the in the uk or in the wet in the west um that name actually Stephen Russell. He's actually been on this show before. Um, he he calls himself the Barefoot Doctor, but he himself says that traditionally in China, Barefoot Doctors, even the Dragon Dog Shamans, well, there were a lot more. The majority were actually women because of the 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 Kuan Yin, the divine feminine energy in that aspect. You know, they could very much tune into that a lot more. So yeah, you know, in, in uh, and you know, even within our our culture. Um, there's the scene there's like interesting things like like the whole thing about the the witch the witch or one of the things of the witch was actually they were brewers you know yeah. the, the, the whole thing and, and they brewed the beer and the you know and there was herbal beers that were you know for healing and whatnot so it it's manipulation of facts but you know the yeah. um you know uh, there's that old saying that history is always manipulated by the winner. You know, the person who who wins or controls the information that's the that's the information you get to hear about. So you yeah. don't always hear about the the truth. Um, well, yes. I, I think on that note, on that note, I think the more we go into the subtle feeling, the more discernment we get, the more that we can pick out easily what's an energy of truthfulness and what isn't really. And what I've learned is not to fight against what's gone on before is just not to give it any energy because if we all stop giving it energy, it will die away of its own. And so if we turn the other cheek, as was once said, and look in the direction of creating something new and beautiful based on heart centricity, then it's bound to be a better place than we're in now, you know. And that's that's a, that's another thing. Can I just say one thing, Sifu? I'm sorry to put it again, but on the breathing one, the in two, three, four, five. So if you actually touch your fingers on your left arm, right, and as you breathe in, you draw it in two, three, four, five, and then stop, and then gently brush it back out again. So it's almost like the first bit collects any tension with that's in the body and so that's the in breath so that's more sympathetic uh, involvement as you then brush it out you're almost like cleansing the body but what this does is it moves away from it brings in the kinesthetic the touchy feely aspect which is so important because most of us have lost sensitivity of our body's awareness and i teach or i help to teach parents of um 
autistic children and people who've got Asperger's syndrome. And right. what tends to happen is it brings them back into the body then and they get much more groundedness, you know, and pe kids with so-called so attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, you know, which I think is a completely different thing, but we'll not go there. But th this brings them back into a grounded state so that they're no, not so hyper as well. So that's something that breathing and touching and all those sort of things can all be co uh, combined to get a more coherent flow, really. There we yeah. are. No, no, hundred percent agree. Because um, you know the the well, <laughs> my see my my teachers, my my seafoods were actually um, you know they they worked in uh, military organisation, they worked in diplomatic organisations, and they actually worked in the private organisations. Um, and it, it's interesting. Well, well, that is one of the first things I was taught by my seafood was before I always think i still think it's a corny way of saying it but they used to say before you can learn to kill you must learn to heal yeah. so the whole idea is that you learn the healing techniques and it's interesting i mean it still hasn't changed much even today like back in the 90s 98 percent of of uk residents have never had a massage um and i think it may be about 95 now you know but but the and and you know it's like there's no the 95 and i think it's still something like um, I, I think it was the last time I checked, it was 84% of people still don't get regular hugs, you know, don't get, and you know, you know, the, this, this general, this, con this connection is like super freaking important. You look in the animal kingdom, you know, the, the, you know, the, the interconnection, the, the stroking and, and, you know, look, you know, caring of each other, um, is it, a regular and, one thing you know in a in a positive way but the play fighting as well but you know in a positive way yeah. of you know finding ways to interact is is so important to to our health so important to our mind well mind body you know for as drug dog shaman it's all mind body spirit it's all that physical emotional and spiritual connection and and yeah you know that that thing of and you know i've had many students i'm part um i'm dyslexic with a, a slight hint of autism myself and and working with dyslexic dyspraxic uh autistic uh, children as well you know this learning to even to allow you know teaching them to actually massage themselves and certain Fantastic. teaching it as a qigong yeah. because you know this and uh, because they're so closed off is that first you can get them to do it to themselves they're more likely to actually allow somebody else to touch them and then and then or you know get their you know so, you know teach their parents so well actually you should you know yes you yes there is that thing of getting the permission and and yeah. and seeking that yeah. balance which is what this is all about but <laughs> it's that whole thing of that interconnection is so vitally important um because it's actually you know ma massage and caring for yourself is that feminine is that divine feminine because when you don't actually look after your own self or you you don't even you get sore back and you're not even like rubbing your own shoulders you're not activating the you know the chemicals within the body that would actually allow healing you know th those muscles are stopping the the, the simplest way my teachers would say that tension mus muscle tension or tension in your body is is blockage it's stopping the, yeah. the, the flow of the flow so just a simple massage would actually help increase the you know the blood flow and then that's like physical massage then the massage of you know finding things that make you laugh and finding things that inspire you that's that's in emotional massage or internal massage yeah, which which then encourages the the blood flow as well and it's the the again with the bruce lipton the whole thing of of uh, i love that uh, one of his books i think it's the, the you know the love one about you know being in love and the whole thing of when you love somebody when you know when you have a a, a rubbish life or a, a rubbish job and a rubbish uh, surroundings and your rubbish way to work but suddenly you fall in love all that seems a little less rubbish, you know, all that seems a little less thing, uh, you know, a little less stressful or a little less irritable. And it's like, well, if that happens when you fall in love, that love feeling you can generate yourself, that love, Absolutely. you know, finding those things that make you smile, finding those things, you know, even, yes, we all got to do nine to five jobs or we all got to find a way to live. Doesn't mean you can't find your passion. 
doesn't mean you can't find other ways to, you know, to make you smile, that inner smile you talked about, which is so vitally important. Um, yeah, and it's, I mean, you know, I love, you know, I love the spiritual stuff. I love the Darius stuff. But also for a lot of people, you've got to take away some of that flowerness and just yeah. put it to logic and put it to that, you know, when you're more relaxed, your body works better, quite simply. And and one of the biggest things with, again, bringing back Bruce Lipton, is that whole thing of our society focuses on stress and tension and worry and fear. And all those naturally um, activate your, let's say, your cave person or your ancient genetics of fight or flight. And so your body shuts down and it shuts down preparing for fight or flight. So it pumps the, the adrenals and, and it gets you ready for fight or flight. And while you're in that mode, so while you're tense and while you're nervous and, and looking around for the saber tooth tiger that actually doesn't exist, um, because you're focusing on the fear or the stress, the worry, your body's not actually healing and it's meant to freaking self heal. That's what we've, we've lost. We, you know, we think, Oh, we, we need a doctor to do that. We need, you can do it yourself. Your body's meant to heal. There, there are medical professions, professionals out there with evidence that showing that we're meant to actually, you know, they say that, that biologically the body should be thriving up to at least 120 150 some of them are saying and they don't know why well we know freaking yeah. why it's yeah. because we're living in stress and fear and tension and we're focusing on all the wrong stuff but hey what do i know exactly same here mm. we know nothing we we know nothing we just we just plod on we just uh, uh as one of my Go, go for it. I, I do I do feel that I'm only ever scratching the surface of what's underneath though. You know, I used to think, you know, in my ego mania, I used to think, Christ, I'm, I'm learning loads here. I'll be able to say this and they'll all think I'm a genius and stuff, you know. And I've come to the point now where you scratch a bit and then there's a whole load more underneath. And then you get to that and then there's a whole load more, you know. Never ending, never ending. Right. I've got a question from, from the mighty uh, Shanine. And I'm bringing it up to the screen now. So she says, what about emotional overwhelm? Overwhelming then uh, six breaths in a minute. I have a sugar addiction and got a bit down earlier today. Uh, three magnums were, were medicine. I felt better, but would love some more insight on these impulses. Yeah, it's, um, it's a short term fix, really, because when we're stressed, our conscious mind doesn't think we're stressed sometimes. There's loads going on in the unconscious. And I think the more, the deeper we go into taking our consciousness into the unconscious, we start to be able to feel when stress and tension is kicking in. So if Shaleen carries on practicing that six breaths per minute, at least three 10-minute sessions a day, after about 90 days, she will have reconstructed a different pathway. But it takes, it takes you know, it takes some discipline you know, and I'm sure she's doing it. <laughs> you know, well, and the whole point, is, the, 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 the thing that I found out is the greatest problem with the whole of the human race and many, many people that I've worked with is the root cause of all our problems was the original sin, which was self-doubt and self-criticism. You know, and that's the thing is we need to learn to love ourselves from the core of our being. And in order to do that, I honestly believe we need to go from the external, right, all the way through, from through our muscles, into our visceral organs, into our bone marrow, into our DNA. And that's our personal stuff done. And then we move then into our cultural stuff then, you know, and then we have to let go of the fears of our ancestors, you know, and then we have to go further back then and we go multicultural and we go nationwide, and from nations we go to internations until we've actually gone right back through the whole of humanity to the beginning, to the original smiling face. And I think it's probably going to take some time to do that. But in that process, we'll learn to expand more and more until we come to full enlightenment, which is a complete and utter, absolute let go of everything. Mm -hmm. So I would say 
you mustn't knock yourself for having a magnum, especially right. if you're one of those nutty ones. They're very pleasant. So let yourself off the hook, right? Yeah. And, and you know, it's just practice, um, Shanine. And um, as I say, I only feel like I'm just starting. But there's always, like, something else that clicks into place, and I think, ah, there you go, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, don't knock yourself because um, that's mm -hmm. just – that's the biggest trap is that we, we knock ourselves and we whip ourselves, you know, with the judgments. And I heard a lovely phrase that says complete freedom means when we've completely freed – ourselves from judging ourselves when judgment is gone completely then we're free you mm. know Cause, yeah because for me that, yeah, that judgment is the loop it will always if you break yourself it will keep you go because you'll feel guilty and then from that guilt then you you want more sugar or you want more whatever it is that that you're that you need and it's the whole idea of actually replacing now you know the six breath method is awesome but i know I know you're hooked on a certain jigum and, you know, and it will, you know, give it time, you know, you're, you know, whatever, whatever it is, find it, do it in a mindful way. And the, the whole point of mindfulness is, you know, is, is allowing yourself to be absorbed in that technique. And, you, you know, the, the breath technique is awesome. You know, anything that is whole, you know, you, you using the whole body. So the one thing I do with the, the, the breath, that breath technique as well is actually expand and contract the body. So, you know, so you and as you know feel yourself expanding and then you know that pause you allow things to settle and then as you breathe the breathing out one of the things in in doubt in the Taoism is that the breathing out so the yin breath the breathing out is actually the more important one because if you breathe out enough you'll have to breathe in you know because that is the the natural cycle what we're taught is to breathe in and hold your breath you know like how many times you'll see people panic and they're holding their breath and when you hold the breath and holding that tension it it there are techniques that that you know the Wim Hof, so um, mighty uh, Robin McKenzie mentioned Wim Hof. Now, when you do hold breath holding in a certain way, it creates fire, creates energy, and you can heat up the body, or you can you can uh, uh, store store great amounts of energy. You you can uh, go through Sahara Desert and and you know not need a drink because you can store energy in a certain way. But what you have to be careful of is too much tension in the wrong way yeah. it creates it creates the issues that we have so it's learning to do it in the right way and, and flowing flowing and so for a lot of people for me is is not so much on the holding the breath is for learning to that breathing and breathing out and and to allow things to flow and the inner smile is also all about relaxation as well yeah. so for you know if if qigong is is your thing that will that will help you that will definitely help you on the path especially if you know somebody who teaches it in in the in a way that's balanced so it's the stretching the body or energizing the body, stretching the body, stretching the mind, stretching the spirit, energizing the body, energizing the mind, energizing the spirit. That's sort of called Qigong, Neigong, and Shen Gong. But the true magic is, is that you can have all, they just words. And, you know, there's techniques behind the words. Learn the techniques. Don't worry about the words. Learn the techniques and, and, and just, and, you know, make it simple. And, you know, you can have a couple of exercises. And you can you can cover it all, or you can have one exercise and cover it all. You can have a billion exercises and cover it all. Whatever floats your boat, as long as you find what floats your boat and let your boat float. You know, enjoy it, go with it, and that's the important thing. Whether you know whether it's the six breath, whether it's it's eating a banana, whether it's the uh, two magnums per day. One one of my seafoods used to say. Um, we had a student who who liked being, you know, or, or would always be moaning and whinging. So if you're going to moan and whinge, enjoy it. Yeah, be exactly. with it. Go, you know, actually enjoy it. You know, don't, t you know, tell yourself off. Whatever you're doing, Taoistically, whatever you're doing, as long as you love it and you enjoy it and you're happy with it, then then you'll be one with your body. But if you punish yourself, the punishment is what keeps you in that loop and holds in the tension and stops you from thriving and keeps you in survival mode rather than thrival mode. Yeah, but hey, I agree, and I think I think even as children, 
um, education focus in focuses on weaknesses and not strengths you know mm -hmm. and you know I, i'm trying to help at an early age now movement therapies and also this i am approach that i developed it's an asset based approach where parents look out for the natural closing kids down and it's really stopping their joy from a very very early age onwards you know mm -hmm. and um what, what, what i like is the waving hands in clouds we try and we try and show kids this and to try and get the feeling of drawing their hands through the mist of the clouds you know and kids pick this up you know absolutely you know and and other thing is i've developed with a local um a local sifu in tai chi chi gong you know and we've done this fu shen um tai chi chi gong which is the god of happiness and it's to describe a heart really and it was a bit like the one that you practice is to change hands and open open mm. but it describes the heart and then it draws it back into the heart with the in breath and then it gives all that love out to the universe then and then from there then it's down to mother earth a bit like um you know the eight pieces of silk where you draw up from the earth it brings it back up then and starts the whole process again so it's quite a simple technique but we can bring the breath in we can bring the movement in and we can bring the feeling in and it's it's relatively easy to learn really so that's that's what we're trying to do up north here you know um to try and bring it all in so to get people to ground themselves to do the shaking hip ones and that willow thing and stuff like that mm. and then and then to, and then to try and draw that in get a really deep sense of the energy being radiated out then you know so i think more and more people are getting into this they're getting into yoga aikido uh, tai chi um, exercise all physical stuff but understanding the importance of breath work that, that that's the key um and, and i mean because you, you obviously so on the, the Akashic academy which i'm part of you saw you know the whole thing of the willow tree chi gong yeah. the 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 uh um hula hoop and shaking the body uh shake the body water feel nice these are really simple exercises they you know they're not you know rocket science you know i love tai chi don't get me wrong but Tai Chi is a whole set of exercises yeah. in the world to learn. The, ma yeah. the mastery of Qigong is it's like an app. It's very, very simple. I mean, in actual fact, you know, Shanine is one of my students. And she, we, I was doing um, the Qigong and there's a family one called Shun. Oh, it's Meridian Charger, but it's, we know it's Shun or Shun Dao. And... Um, and some kids turned up on on the private lesson. There's a a couple of, of kids that turned up and suddenly, you know, you know folks, you know, looking and you know, oh, you know, I'm trying to copy. So okay then. And so Shanine actually saw it. It's actually on my on my group that you know we we started doing well, um, uh, Shun with the with his kids and kids like you know yeah. that's the thing. You, kids pick it up so quickly. I've done I've done exercises with kids. That have taken adults, you know, and some adults, you know, you know, a good couple of weeks to to pick up, and and they're because because of the whole thing again with the Bruce Lipton about um uh, up to the age of well he says seven, my teachers always said nine, but up to the age of between seven and nine, yeah, the the the, the brain is like a sponge and it draws yeah. in so much information, yeah. and this is why. This is actually why, like in in Canada, in the ice skating world and in martial arts, they start them off about four years old um, because, you know, they'll pick it up so quickly and they absorb it so quickly. Um, they learn you know, they learn it. And the whole point of in, in, in the States, I know they're doing, we're sort of catching up, but the, I know in the States they do a lot of, uh, in the schools now, doing meditation. Yeah. And doing, instead of, I mean, I'm I'm not sure I agree with the whole they do meditation in detentions, yeah. um, um, but but I do it for the whole school, not just for the the so-called naughty kids. But yeah. it's you know it's the whole point of is they're learning these techniques and learning that you know you actually have it's this weird thing within the qigong, the Taoist arts and tai chi is you learn to control yourself or you learn you learn these techniques and then once you learn them you actually learn to forget them or absolutely you learn to do them as um automatic 
um, thing. So, you know, it just becomes like brushing your hair or get getting dressed or tying up your shoelaces. And when you get to that level, it goes on to the subconscious. And when it gets to the subconscious, it reprograms your brain because over, over which, again, I think it's 80 to 90 percent or 95 percent of of your um, the things you do in a day are on the subconscious level. Um, and and it's the reprogram the re that is the big key. And I love, like, you know, watching the whole Bruce Lipton thing as well. And he says, you know, he's got a system he uses, but he also says Qigong does it, yoga does it, yeah. uh, Tai Chi does it. And it's this reprogram the mind. And, you know, we get back to, obviously, we need it as adults. But also, if you're teaching your kids, you're teaching the future generations. So this big cycle, this, yeah. this loop I'm talking about, We'll kill it. We'll change it. I'll rephrase. We'll change it <laughs> from now, you know, getting the kids in involved is that they mean with the time they get to, you know, 20, 30, 40, that it will be now normal, natural to them yeah. rather than like us adults going, oh, I'm not sure about that or oh, not sure, you know. Uh, it's like it's that's the way we, we, ch we change these cycles, these repeats is by bringing this information in from the kids and bringing it into the future but hey what do i know <laughs> so okay uh let's have a quick look of a couple more things and then i think we'll wrap up uh is so the mighty robin mckenzie one of our co -ho former co-hosts or co-host still um when he's about and also um also been guest on the show as well says loads of things are affected but if you are not regular they won't work continuously yeah it's all about finding that practice well as we said it's finding a practice that you enjoy you've got to enjoy it if you don't enjoy it there's no point doing it if it but you find something that you know so whether it is yoga whether it's qigong whether it's tai chi whether it's knitting as long as it's as long as it's bringing you joy as well as helping you actually relax and let go of stuff because that's the for me that's the most important thing is that if you hold all that tension in you'll just get ill and that's why we have so many issues we do because people are holding all that tension in and when you physically hold it in it affects you emotionally which affects you spiritually um, and that it's all about finding that balance. So, and and Nick, Nick, I was talking about his master, Nicholas and Chen style. Uh, or any style is good. You, you know, is is the, the true, even in the Tai Chi classics, they say as long as it adheres to the classics and what they mean by the classics is the, the Tai Chi checklist. So as long as it keeps the energy flowing and as long as it relaxes the body it doesn't matter whether it's chen style yang style banana style core blimey this is hard yeah. style whatever style it is as long as it works for you and as long as it's doing its job they're all good they're uh, you know they're all good as that's what my seat has taught me you know is is that styles are only as good as you let them be you know you've got to find you know what best works for you um so is there any – I mean, there's a few more messages, but I'll um, – I think – well, we'll just play two more. So uh, Gail says, we do breathing exercises in a chill acts session at preschool. They love it. Yeah, I, I know those. I, kids really do. They really do get this. They get it far more than adults, but they are little seafoods after all. Um, Shanine says – Great work, you two. Uh, thank you so very much. You're more than welcome. Uh, and finally, Mike. <laughs> yes. They're all together now. <laughs> that one's for Shanine. Um, and then Mike says, uh, no, don't, don't get me wrong. Sorry. What do you do with your consciousness? Where do you put your energies? Okay, did I miss something? Let's have a quick look. Um, but what do we do with it? Where was the other one from from him? So, what do you do with your consciousness? Um, well, you, you, your consciousness is your fo your focus. So, what you right? So, the subconscious it runs everything in the background unless you draw it to your focus. So, the whole thing of 
meditation is when you're focusing on one thing and forgetting everything else you're focusing your conscious focusing your consciousness on creating that reality creating things in that certain way if you don't focus for me and how, how my teachers taught it and what bruce lipton's saying as well is that if you don't have something in your conscious mind and you're running in your subconscious whatever your subconscious patterns are routines they're going to be what rules your life so if your subconscious patterns from your childhood was negativity that's what's going to be running the the main uh, process do you do you agree with that do you understand? yeah yeah what um, i feel is as the years have gone on i've sort of sunk deeper if you like into my um unconscious um it's associated with feelings uh, so consciousness and feelings go together and hmm. after a while you start to become detached and become an observer of your thoughts and of your feelings as well so you know if you can see them you can't be them in actual fact you know so there's a stage where you just become a sort of a member of the audience where you're sort of watching your own life going on as joe delaney but there's a sort of a watcher behind this and he can decide or it can decide whether it wants to consciously intervene and change the path or just let the play go on, really. That's, that's my feeling. So most of the time, I'm in this sort of state of neutrality, a balanced neutrality, and then I decide whether I want a tea or coffee. You know, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's difficult to explain um, in words, as I say. If you, can, you know, the Tao that can be explained is not the Tao, you know. Yeah. But once you've, once you've felt it and sensed it, you really don't need to explain it to anybody else because mm. you know that they understand that. But what I'm saying is, you can store the energy. You can mindfully move the energy around your body, as in iron shirt qigong, and you can actually compress your bone marrow, and you can you can leave it there for when it's required. You know, and people, um, lots of people who practice this, they put weight on and stuff because that you know. Fat to me is potential creativity. It's potential energy waiting to be changed into um, creativity. You know, so so to to answer the question simply, you just get to feel and you just get to know what to do with it based upon a deeper understanding. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, um, I, it's actually a shame that she needs not on because, like, so the dragon dog Reiki. It, 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 we're, with that you do you use your conscious mind you, you know it's not just about you know feeling the, the energy you're sending the energy it's a physical thing it's an emotional thing so when i blast somebody with with energy you know they almost physically feel themselves not knocked back um and science actually can explain that you know because the whole point of energy is that there is a physicalness to that energy and what you know it does come out in waves through your in the biometric field of the heart, which is actually what the ancient ones called the Torah, as well as the chakras and everything else, you can feel that. You know, we talk about people when a certain person walks in the room, the, you, you know, yeah. the room lights up, you feel that energy. Um, and, and that's, you know, energy is far more tangible than people think. Um, but we you know it's that going back to the Tao that can be explained it's very hard to explain this stuff but you know you know the whole point is is that energy is far more, we are all energy everything is vibration we're all interconnected and we're sort of told that all oh, of oh, that stuff oh you know that's not tangible but science knows it's tangible that otherwise science wouldn't have blind case studies because they know that the observer affects the re affects the experiment affects the reality that started all the way back in the 1900s you know we know that things are a lot more ta our consciousness can affect energy you know we are energy and our consciousness affects energy but it's this play the yin and the yang you know <laughs> sub subconscious and conscious yeah. you know and it's about learning that one is in the lead or the other one's in the lead and it's learning when you program or change your subconscious in a positive way that if you just go with the flow that stream will lead you in, in a glorious way it will lead you so because the whole thing my teachers used to te teach about your 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 consciousness or you are like a boat 
And when you focus, when you focus on certain things, that's you rowing the boat. And the true Wu way, the do little and everything he's done, is that you should just do little. You focus a little bit on your that intent. I want to go this way, and then let everything else happen automatically. Go with the flow. Um, and spontaneous qigong. So eventually, you learn all these techniques, and then you just you you go through different ones all the time, and that helps this spontaneous nature. It allows you to, you know, and that's the true, you know. But you know, this is called. You see that spontaneous nature in dance. You see it in in art. You see it in in music, especially like jazz. You know, this going with the flow, allowing yourself to play true play is being spontaneous true play is allowing yourself to you know build that energy up release that energy in whatever way you need to release it and allow it to do its its job and like you very quickly one last thing that iron qigong you talked about though one of the biggest things one of the biggest things in martial arts martial arts is was, is the three m's medical martial and meditational and martial is only a tiny little cherry on top of that cake yeah you know the truth is about is the meditational side of martial arts and it's the medical the self-healing side of martial arts that same fighting that you know you you could use to to protect yourself or to fight somebody with you use that same energy to heal your body you use that same energy to complete your mission to to do whatever it is you want to do and that's what it's all about it's you have so much energy in your body that they Nissan Harriman talks about a cup full of space a cup full of space a cup full of you could actually there's so much energy in that cup full of space itself those atoms that it could evaporate the whole all the oceans of the planet you're so you're more than a cup full of you're more than a pint so imagine how much energy you have inside you and Taoistically, actually it's limitless because you can increase there is no limit to how much energy you can actually draw into yourself that's just your starting point but as any good sifu should say hey what do i know <laughs> so is there anything else sir, you want to finish off with before we wrap up totally no I've enjoyed this immensely. It's my it's my stuff. I love it. I love talking to other people who understand it as well. And um, I think my purpose is really is just to share my experience, my strength, and my hope with other people who may be going through stuff and help them to realize that what they're looking for is not out there. It's in here. So it's to come out of the head into the heart and go deep into the heart. Yeah. Because my view is... If you get the balance right, the two sides of the heart open and then the soul, where all the wisdom is, comes up to meet you. And that's it. Sure. So thanks very much, Sifu. It's been a pleasure. Oh, and, oh, uh, oh, it, it's been a great. I've loved this immensely. It's been a great pleasure. We'll definitely love to do this again in the future. Um, uh, one thing I forgot to uh, uh, before we uh, did the show. What um, do you have a website? Do you have you know what's your shows? What are your shows? You know what are your podcast? Yeah, your... I um, I think I'm being sort of guided to put myself out there a bit more because I've I've spent such a lot a lot of time in academia, um, but now they're starting to call me a scientist, a shaman, and a showman, right? And um, I like that, you know, because yeah. I, I can do science if I need to. I can do spirituality if I need to. But my, my view is to bring it together with a sensible, balanced focus to try and get the message across, really. So um, if people want to find out, if they just go on to uh, Dr. Dr. Joe Delaney dot com, um, the, there's some links in there. I'm working on the website, but I'm hoping over the summer to maybe have a few sort of spontaneous Zoom calls where anybody who's knocking about can come in and we can have a bit of a chat like this and stuff. Awesome. I'm just quickly, well, let's just, just do it this way. Everybody else can sort of get the, the gist. But so Dr. Delaney, Dr. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Delaney, D-E-L-A-N-E-Y dot com. Uh, and, is that with the Joe or without the Joe? Yeah, it's with the Joe. So it's D R J O E D E L A N E Y dot com. And on there, there's some links to the I Am Approach YouTube channel with talks on. 
it's like everything else um you know i do a lot in the day but there's just not enough time to do everything that's trying to come out really and i know you know what i mean by that oh yeah yeah but but it's, it's a whole drip 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 you know he's yeah. he's for everybody it's all about you know <laughs> i you know like like her joe himself you know i've been doing this for a heck of a long time don't get don't you know it's, oh oh it's too hard i started with one exercise then i added another then I added another. Yeah. Then I, you know, 37 years later, I've got what I've got. And, and you know, and I, you know, I studied uh, ph philosophy, theology, uh, quantum physics, me uh, me medical, you know, anatomy, uh, you know, different healing techniques. But it all starts from one thing, one thing, one thing. And you just, you have to build it up, you know, and that's what it's all like a child think of your single little steps think of you know you build it up a little bit at the time don't get lost on the big whole goal start with the one yeah. thing okay so well thank you so much i've enjoyed this absolutely immensely so so as i've sort of put on here very quickly so drjoedelaney.com you can find the mighty doc this way <laughs> um if on my stuff if you if you're interested in what i do you can find me on www.seafoodboggy.com i am also which is i'm also in one of the groups called the coaches and healers sangha um which sangha means gathering and it's by the mighty coach nick who's also been on the show and it is for coaches and healers especially looking for techniques to build up their business to help and heal others and uh um uh, Coach Nick is uh, very much a spiritual guru as well as actually being a sales guru. So he teaches you techniques to help you talk to people because if you're a healer and a coach, that's what you should be doing is talking yep. to people. So he helps teach you and guide you. And I actually teach on there is Qigong. Um, Qigong Fu, a Fu bit means hard work or practice. <laughs> so um, the whole idea is is to give you the techniques to give you boundless energy, um, so you can keep going like me and and be a madman. Um, and then one other one as well is the Mighty Akashic Academy, um, which is sort of like Gaia on Facebook. Um, there's the Akashic Academy Network. There are many different hosts on there. Uh, with many different wonderful shows. I've actually got a couple on there now. Um, I do The Way of the Dragon Dog Shaman, which is sort of the Chinese style of Reiki and beyond. And as well as just on Thursday, I started a new show, which is uh, Tai Chi Chi Dao, which is basically a mixture of Tai Chi techniques and, and Qigong techniques. And the whole idea is to, again, to give you techniques and give you abilities to supercharge yourself and ensure that you never burn out. So... Thank you so much, uh, Joe, for this wonderful show. Um, don't disappear just yet, but everybody else, I hope you enjoy the show. We do have a show on uh, Sunday, this Sunday, which is, I think it's Carol Noonan. She's coming back on the show, and she wants to talk about the Palladians. So the uh, uh, so asking questions are from the Palladians. So if you're interested in that, come back. I think it's 8.30, no, 7.30, 7.30 UK time, which Eastern is 2.30 in the afternoon. So otherwise, I'll see you next time. So it's goodbye from the mighty Joe, Dr. Joe. It's goodbye from myself. Take care, guys. See you later. Until next time, love Chi and Shen from... Joe, myself, and the way of conscious mindfulness. Bye, guys, for now. Oh, no, press that one. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>